Here's Reinman in the Morning, on demand from 1021 and 1053, The Shark. It's time for your News on the Nines with News Guy. Well, history was made in Russia, where for the first time, a chef sent something back. Yes, a man who once served as Vladimir Putin's caterer nearly overturned the Kremlin. I haven't seen a chef get that worked up since the Muppet Show. Yes, the leader of the Wagner Group called things off when Putin gave him bribes to just go away. So I guess Russia handles coups the way we handle trick-or-treaters. And that's your news on the nines. Now on Rhyming in the Morning, it's What's Up on the Shark App with Megan, the Shark's own app and website guru. Megan, what's going on? This is actually a pretty awesome statistic. A New Hampshire city is the third best run what? in all of America. It's basically... So you're telling me if I go there and I decide to go for a run, the city is the third best place to do that? Yeah. No, I'm kidding. No, no. It, it judges based on things like financial stability, education, oh. health and safety, that kind of run. Oh, managed, organized, if you will. So what you're telling me is it's not safe for me to go there and go for a run and everything. Uh, you, you'll have to be the judge of that for yourself. Well, I can be the judge because I actually have bad Achilles, so it'd probably be dangerous no matter where we are. I don't even know why we're talking about me running, to be quite honest, Megan. Did you ever run? Were you ever doing like track and field yes. in school? Yeah, I was a cross-country runner. You're tall, school. so you strike me as like you'd be a fast runner. I don't know. you got long that, legs. That's myth. That's myth. It's myth. It's myth. Like Some Achilles. Of our best, I'm it's telling Greek you, our, myth. our two best runners were short dudes. No offense. No disrespect intended. Oh, that's cool, though. Uh, but this, I like 5Ks. That's the extent of my running. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, I can't run much further than that. You like Five Guys, too. There's a theme. Burgers and fries, baby. Does this place have a Five Guys? The best run city Prob- in third Probably. Best? I'm not sure. I've what only- county? Can you give me a hint? What county of New Hampshire? What area? The counties are hard to know. Can you give me a neighboring town that's maybe not as it, well it run? Is, it is southern New Hampshire. It's near okay. Mass. Near Mass. Okay. You're one of those people that calls Massachusetts Mass. Mass. That's how I know you're a real New Hampshireite. I'm too lazy to say the full thing. Where were you born? Were you born in New Hampshire? I was born in Portsmouth. Yeah, there you go. See, I was born in Beverly, So, but you get to say Mass. Mass. Go to the Shark app. Find out which New Hampshire city is the third best run in the U.S. Yesterday was the Portsmouth... Dover 400 baseball game at Leary Field in Portsmouth, and they had an old-timey baseball game, and it was very, very authentic. And here's how it works. These guys don't wear any gloves. They have this big, giant baseball. You should see the umpire. Oh, the umpire, he's wearing this dark suit, this big, long coat, and a top hat. I mean, you want to go up to him and say, hey, man, where's your groundhog? You know what I'm saying? But anyway, I talked to one of the players. His name is Brian Sheehy, and he came over for a talk. And, uh, well, here's what he had to say in the middle of the game. How's it going out there today, Brian, on the field? The Dover 400, Portsmouth 400 game. Is Portsmouth 400 the name of the event, or is that how many runs they've scored today uh, so far, that Brian? That seems like they've scored that. Like, yeah. It's not, it's like not a good day for Dover. Okay, well, how are you guys going to come back? Uh, score a couple touchdowns the here? Game. We're, we're probably going to okay. focus on the second game that we're playing today. How often do you do this? How often do you play old-timey baseball? Just about every weekend. And how how long have you been doing it? Uh, 20 years. Have you ever gotten hurt? Have you ever jammed a finger or anything? Oh, my gosh. He's holding up his hand right. It's like an orca whale. I think, I mean, everyone kind of gets nicks and bruise. The ball's not super hard, but you like, don't have a glove. So so what makes you keep coming back and doing it, putting your hands on the line? Uh, I've been doing it since I was in college. History major, history teacher now. So, you know. Where do you teach? North Andover High. Do you want to give a shout-out to your students? Shout-out to my students. Uh, I'm sure they're listening. It's a great event. Uh, happy 400th to Dover and Portsmouth. Uh, we play just about every weekend down at Spencer Pierce Little Farm in Newberry. It's a lot of fun. You get to see the history and evolution of the game, and, you know, it's always fun to come out and play. And now, here's Sports in 10 Seconds with the Sportsman. We should have Gronk lead a parade of duck boats to the Kremlin. That's your Sports in 10 Seconds with Sportsman on Ryman in the Morning. Megan, what else is going on? I think I heard about this. I want you to tell me if you have as well, but there's apparently a dry town that exists in New Hampshire. So you're telling me there's a town in New Hampshire that year-round has no snow or rain? <laughs> if that were a thing, you wouldn't catch me here. You'd catch me moving all my stuff there immediately. You'd move by yourself? Yeah. Okay. Well, you've run a lot of 5Ks, so you're in good shape. I live alone. I'd be willing to live alone in a place where there's no rain or snow. But, Megan, this town, we're keeping it live and local on the Shark App. You're telling me if I go to the Shark App, there's a dry town. What does that mean? 
Megan. No I don't know. No booze this. allowed. Okay. So it's you're got a population. Me, it's got a population of just ninety three people. She's and a, she's no a small booze one. allowed. So you're telling me that ghosts are not allowed in this town in New Hampshire. No ghosts. No, no rain. Ghosts. No snow. This is an amazing town. But why? What makes it so dry? Because of that. There's a history to it. Okay. That there's more to the story than meets the what you, eye. What you, Paul Harvey. Yes. Yes, you absolutely know who Paul Harvey is. <laughs> I smile and I Born nod. That's what I, that's what I tell but, my friends to do whenever I say or do something they don't understand. I said, just smile and nod your head, like pretend that you understand. That's what I do when my engineer friends talk to me. That's what they tell you every day me. before you come into the studio to talk to me, Megan. I've overheard it. But in all seriousness, we're going back to the days of prohibition, if you will. And there's a town in New Hampshire that still abides by these rules. Yeah. 93 people, you said? Yeah, that's funny enough, more an unrelated topic. That's not even the smallest town in New Hampshire. The smallest town in New Hampshire has just two people in it. That's not Dixville Notch, is it? No. Wow, there's a town with smaller... It's called, it's called Livermore. Livermore. <laughs> Which I also wrote about on the Shark app. <laughs> Who would have thought with a name like Livermore, you couldn't get more people to come live there? Well, if you want to check out what town is the dry town... In New Hampshire, go check it out on the Shark app. It's time for your News on the Nines with News Guy. Over the weekend, Chris Christie appeared at a conference where he was booed. But he wasn't mad because he thought they were saying food. <laughs> Rock band The Offspring says all the swear words were mistakenly erased from their new album. And this is strange. The same thing happened to Kenny G. <laughs> Larry the Cable Guy says he only appears live about 10% as much as he should. Wow, he really is a cable guy. And that's your news on the nines. Now back to Reinman in the Morning. Hey, this is really cool. Yesterday at the Music Hall in downtown Portsmouth, Patrick Dempsey from right up in Lewiston, Maine, he was in conversation with Robin Roberts from Good Morning America, and the topic was finding your purpose. It was a wonderful time, and afterwards I got invited over to go sit down and have a quick interview with Patrick Dempsey. And right before Patrick comes out, uh, they come out and say, hey, uh, is it okay if Robin comes and sits down? To, uh, yeah, Robin Roberts, uh, I'll do that, sure. Uh, so we came and we had a wonderful chat, and uh, one of the great things we talked about was the Dempsey Center up in Maine, and this is a project that Patrick began back in 2008. Uh, it's in honor of his mother uh, and her battle with cancer, and uh I hope you enjoy my conversation with Patrick Dempsey and Robin Roberts. Thank you so much for coming to Portsmouth. This was such a wonderful talk. You just spoke about finding your purpose at the music hall. And what what brought you here? This was just such an amazing event, just at 5 o'clock on a Sunday. Right. We were always trying to figure out a way to sort of bridge uh, our two towns and our two states to work yes. together. And we have a lot of people that come to the center to get treated. We don't treat the disease, we treat the person holistically. Yes. And it's sort of wrap around care, and we do the entire family. Mm. Uh, and so we were just a, another way for us to just combine our two communities and to get the word out there. So if people have been impacted by cancer, we're here for you and we want to help support you in any way we can. So if you know someone or you yourself, please reach out. Go to the thedempseycenter.org. And if not, come up and visit us and hopefully we can help you. Now, Patrick, I know you're from Lewiston, Maine, mm -hmm. uh, that area. Rob, is this your first time in Portsmouth? Oh, of course not. No, you've been here I've before? Heard, I, I, I had a brunch at uh, Goat. Okay. I had an effing, uh, excuse me. That's <laughs> right? fine, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I see I'm local already. <laughs> no, um, I have a goddaughter who is, lives in Rye. Okay. Actually, so I'm here quite a bit. But this is oh, really wow. special. This is really special um, yeah. to be here with Patrick and for people to come out. It was a large group coming out and I love how Patrick when they're talking about the Dempsey Center it's not about research and you know people are fine that's great but just really treating the individual cancer is not one size fits all right and it was really cool that it was here in Portsmouth and I can I just say great crowd the Dempsey challenge is coming up yes we September want to talk 23rd. about that. yes we're doing it all in one day right now so that's going to be fun so you can do the run and the, and the ride in one day or the walk it's our biggest fundraising activity that we have in the year and it's a great celebration just getting out there with everybody in the community people come from all over the world we have a great time on the bike and you're rolling along and you have these great conversations for two or three miles and then they go off and then you ride with the next group and you go into these little towns and people know we're coming through and we'll stop have a cup of coffee with some of the locals and move on and it's great and we want to get people active i think the best way to prevent any kind of disease is to be active right get yes. up in the morning 
get out and do your exercise first thing and you're great for the day. We talked about joy tonight mm -hmm. and it gives you joy for the rest of the day. And how can people sign up or contribute? You go, if they... go to the DempseyCenter.org if you need help, if you have anyone in your family who has been impacted by cancer, or go to the DempseyChallenge.org and register there. We had a bit of a debate oh, on yeah? the show the other day about who should really be McDreamy and McSteamy. Right. This brought back some old, soaping some old wounds yeah. for some listeners. Uh -huh. I'm going to run by an end, and Robin, jump in here. Uh, please. I'm I want to give you a few uh, historic, famous duos. And I'd like to hear from you who you think would be McDreamy and who you think would be McSteamy. Okay. Oh. Okay. So the first one up, Hall and Oates. Who's McDreamy? Oh, oh Who's McSteamy? Daryl Hall from up in Maine. Who's McDreamy? Who's McSteamy? Daryl Hall. He would probably be McSteamy, I think, Daryl Hall. Okay. I think that would be... Yeah. He'd be McSteamy. Interesting. And then Interesting. Oates, even though he has the mustache, he'd be McDreamy. And Robin, this might be for you. Okay. Tom Brady, Rob Gronkowski. Oh, Who's McDreamy? Oh, Who's McSteamy? Oh, oh. I'm going to... I'm Gronkowski would be McSteamy. Yes, he'd be yeah. Steamy. Yeah. And it's got to be. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, and he Brady would be McDreamy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. Rob doesn't even wear a shirt in, like, you know, walking yeah, around at malls. That's when I can yeah, this. That's fine. Yeah. Last one here, and another. And these are your rivals, Robin, okay. in the oh. morning. You ready for this? Bert and Ernie. Who's McDreamy? Who's McSteamy? <laughs> this is a tough this one. This is really this a is hard tough, one if right? you start to uh... think about this. Because one's messy, but the other's got a unibrow. Oh, my God. That you is... know, that's a, I don't know. I have an answer that's for that. That's up. really hard. Toss-up? Toss up. Yeah. If you or someone you know has been affected by cancer and could use some care and support, visit the DempseyCenter.org. And also, don't forget to check out DempseyChallenge.org. And now, here's Sports in 10 Seconds with the Sportsman. You think McDreamy would ride a tandem bicycle? That's your Sports in 10 Seconds with Sportsman on Ryman in the Morning. Megan, hit me with a third thing from the Shark app. I'm going to hit you with a third thing from okay. the Shark app. Mm -hmm. There is a gentleman who was recently named president of Massachusetts College, but our coworker thinks that he bears a striking resemblance to someone on the Bravo reality show Below Deck Sailing Yacht. What I want to know, right? For, of course, of course. Yeah, you're smiling and nodding. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what yeah, it is I'm, either. I'm giving you my Paul Harvey. But what face. I what uh -huh. I want to know from you is, what's your like guilty pleasure reality TV show? If you have one, I don't know that I do. Do you watch any reality TV? No. You watch like don't you watch Unexplained Mysteries and things like that? I tried to watch Unsolved Mysteries, the new one on oh, Netflix. Oh, that. Yeah. But they were sad. It was all just like a Dateline without the reveal at the end. See, I remember when I was a kid. You had Robert Stack, and he'd come on, and he'd be like, Un unsolved mysteries, and then he'd have wear his trench coat and everything, and he'd like walk out of the fog, and he'd be like, and that's when they saw the strange creature in the sky. Now it's just sad stuff. It's dangerous. People disappearing. It's uh, That's not fun. It's weird stuff. And yeah, it's not fun. So no. I, what should I try to get into? Is there anything that I would like reality wise? Uh, see, I, I don't I, think that I, I would. watch a lot of reality TV, but I don't think you'd like any of it. I mean, yeah. you might like America's Got Talent. That's true. That's our, something you might pal, enjoy. Howie Mandel. Yeah, he's they're, on here they're, they're doing about auditions that. right now. And then uh, I might try to get into Dancing with the Stars. Wait, yeah, I think you'd like Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, That's another I'm one try, I watch. I might try that because I love Tom Bergeron too. Would you ever watch something like I, I watch Hell's Kitchen? <laughs> no, too watch? much stress. You can't. No, but you're telling me there's a president of a college here in New England that's a, a doppelganger for someone from a certain reality show. Yeah, a Bravo show. So okay. if, that, if that is something that, that floats your boat, we do have a, a pictures Did of the Did you just two. say floats your boat? Yes. Bruno referring to Below Deck? Yes, I, that's something I say sometimes. Boy, you need a vacation from Reinman. I mean, I, I'm heading out of here. <laughs> I, I'm gonna be. I'm going to be hitting the beach soon. Yeah. I'll, I'll, send, I'll send you a, a selfie sanity. from the boardwalk. It's time for your news on the nines with News Guy. At the Glastonbury Festival, singer Rick Astley covered the ACDC song Highway to Hell. Not to be outdone, Barry Manilow bit the head off a bat. <laughs> singer Pink was stunned when somebody threw a loved one's remains on stage during a live performance. Even worse, they weren't cremated. Maury Povich is selling at-home DNA kits. However, it only works by using a sample from a mullet. And that's your news on the nines. Now back to Reinman in the Morning. 
Megan, what else is going on? There is a New England city that has some of the cleanest hotels in the United States. But I have to ask you, Mm -hmm. have you ever had any horror stories in a hotel? Mm. That's more of a horror story than the Delta Pilot. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that guy? It's my hyena cackle coming out there. That's a callback. Check that out on the Shark Up. There was this pilot who was trying to sleep at a hotel in Boston, and the FBI raided the wrong room. You had the audacity to want to sleep. a practice exercise, mind you. Gone wrong. Mm. Hotel horror stories. Uh, not so much. Uh, once somewhere else I worked, though, uh, we were like at a work retreat, and there was a big thunderstorm, and the power went out. And it was, a little, it was a little spooky. What about you? Hotel nightmares here in New England. Do you ever have a bad uh, hotel room? In New England? I don't think so. I have like a funny story, but okay. it's, it's Go for th- it. there's very little that I can share on air. <laughs> Um, oh, so I, give, me I was, the, give me the one Senate summary. The Spark Notes version yeah. is that I was on a high school trip to Quebec and Montreal and we were staying in a hotel and we opened one of the drawers and we found one of those like review cards and some kids had apparently stayed there prior to us and they had complained as a joke about how there was no breakfast menu, no women, no drugs, that they were disappointed in the hotel. <laughs> and okay. that's that's the, that's me keeping it G, but you, I... You shared a room with Motley Crue. Uh, of but this course. Is, we have the cleanest hotels, New Hampshire. In New England. In New England. All right, and we'll find out which ones on the Shark app. And now, here's Sports in 10 Seconds with the Sportsman. Dennis Rodman said if Larry Bird played today, he'd be in Europe. If Rodman played today, he'd be in jail. That's your Sports in 10 Seconds with Sportsman on Ryman in the Morning. Megan, what else is going on? I've never really thought about this, but New England has a whole lot of tourist attractions, as we all know. But some are more overrated than others, and others are more on the underrated side that you might not necessarily think about. I'll give you the one that's the most overrated right now, Plymouth Rock. I was literally about to say that I was having a conversation with someone yesterday about this, and he's like... I went to Plymouth and I said, oh, you know, did you go to like the museums? They like living history museums because that sounds really cool. And he's like, if you want the truth, I wanted to see the rock. Mm -hmm. And it was very underwhelming. And I said, why on earth would you go just to see the rock? Like if I ever go to the Plymouth Museum, which I probably will eventually. Plymouth Museum, that's what it's called. I'm looking it up right now. I'm, I'm thinking that you might be right. But I also remembered that you didn't know Montreal was in Quebec. Plymouth um, Patuxet Museums. History okay. Museum in Plymouth, Mass. I'm showing you the Google search right now. Plymouth. Okay, there you go. Exactly. See, I, I'm I am cultured. I they know I know my history. In, just put the rock in the museum. You could probably fit it in like someone's desk drawer for crying out yeah. loud. Well, I I wouldn't drive that far to see a rock. Honestly, here's what I want to know: Is the rock? What's the significance? Was it there? Supposedly, yeah, but then they like broke it up and like they put it in parades and stuff, and it what? fell it fell off a truck. What and did broke someone it have like gunk on their shoe and they like wipe the no, gunk on the was, rock you know and it's it like oh, you know what it is, and it ties back to another uh, New England native. It's like the Giving Tree from Dr. Seuss. People just kept taking off chunks of the rock. Like, well, I want a little bit of it till there was like nothing left. Now it's a paperweight. It's a Plymouth paperweight. Go see it. I don't know when a rock has ever been interesting. Mount Rushmore. It might be interesting. That's the only interesting rock that I can think of, and, and Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Yeah, and his belt might still be in the Piscataqua River. Oh, Go that's read about true. that on the Shark App. That's true. Nice tie did in there. Did we just get three things in there in one? We did. You proud of us, Herb? Hey, it's a cat. You guys Stop. are live and Stop. local. That was a hat trick. We love I'm her. so proud of you guys. We it's love classic her. hits for the Seacoast, 1021, 105, 3, the Shark. I love my job. We'll be I want right to keep back it. With that wacky Reinman. It's time for your News on the Nines with News Guy. So, are you streaming the new Trump tapes or buying them on iTunes? <laughs> yes, President Trump was captured on tape talking about stolen documents. Even more shocking, President Biden was captured on tape not talking. <laughs> In Boston, a 32-year-old woman was busted for pretending to be a high school student when she drove her car to school, which is also how I got kicked out of Little League. And that's your news on the nines. Now back to Reinman in the Morning. All right, we've reached that point where I wrote something for the Shark app and Megan has questions. Despite living in this state literally since the dawn of man, there are plenty of things in New Hampshire I haven't done yet, one of which is visit Clark's Trading Post. Oh, but yeah. you're telling me there's a, a new addition to this attraction park, yes. if you will? Yeah, there's a, a new sign. If you go to the Shark app, you can see it. And you're going to go, sign? What is it? No, this sign's awesome. Like, it's really cool. It brings back all the feels. I saw the sign. 
There you there go. We go. Yeah. Um, we play that here on the Shark. Of course. Um, but, you know, it's it just it takes you back to the 50s and how it all started. It's a real fascinating story, Clark's yeah. Trading Post, and I kind of went into it there. I honestly didn't know a lot of it. Um, I forgot. About, I always forget about the bears, which is weird. Yeah, we've had a lot of bears be talked about on Ryman in the are, morning. Yes, we have. But these are trained bears. Like, they're, they're entertainment bears. Do you think they have agents, the bears? Like, if I wanted to get one of those one. bears. You should be an agent. <laughs> have your human call my human. That's how they would do it. Of course. No, but it's a really cool story, and it's a place a lot of people stop. There's a, one or two celebrities that always mention it every year when they go by. Clark's Trading Post. Have you been to Clark's recently? I, I haven't. I've never been. You've never been to Clark's? Yeah. I, I, I have yet to visit. There are a lot of things in New Hampshire, as mentioned, that I have not seen or done, which is no. kind of sad. But I'm working on it. Slowly yeah. but surely. Yeah, but it's it's cold. Oh, Megan gets so cold. I always get cold. But I'm actually not cold right now, Reinman. But you know what's interesting is while they're throwing things back... There is another New Hampshire attraction that's like speeding ahead to the future. That's also mentioned in the article. So it's a time of mixed emotions. We love throwing it back, right? There are people up in the <laughs> White Mountains. We do. And now, here's sports in 10 seconds with the sportsman. A 101-year-old woman threw out the first pitch for the Mariners. Cough, cough, steroids. That's your sports in 10 seconds with sportsman on Ryman in the Morning. There's a story on the Shark app that's getting a lot of traction, and it's got a lot of dialogue going back and forth. People on one side, people on the other. The whale wall in downtown Portsmouth. Now, this has really stirred up some stuff the past few months. Some people saying, where did it go? Some people saying, it's the artist's responsibility. Some people saying, oh, the town messed it up. Well, guess what? A good friend of mine, I ran into him the other day at the Portsmouth 400 game, Rich Blaylock. He's a city councilor in Portsmouth. And guess what? Maybe he gave us the inside scoop. Here's what he had to say. All right, I'm here with my friend Rich Blaylock. I grabbed him off the baseball field at the Dover Portsmouth 400 game. How's it going, Rich? Good. How are you, John? Good. We know each other from playing AAU basketball. Basketball together. We go way back. We go way back. Shout out to uh, Coach DeGraff. Okay, I grabbed you right here. You tell me your side of the Portsmouth whale wall. What happened? Where'd it go? Why didn't I mean, Wyland, he came, he did a great mural. You know, we had a beautiful mural. Everyone loved it. Yeah. Uh, but then he forgot to put on the final coat that would protect it. Um, he forgot. He forgot. And then he sent it back to Portsmouth for city staff to apply it. I think some weather and some other elements may have been a factor, uh, but it was not applied correctly. And if a lot of people remember, it got very cloudy. Yes. It was, and it was kind of like what happened murky. to our mur- mural. Yeah. Yeah. It looked, sudden, like a, it looked like a, less like the ocean, more like the Charles River. Yeah. And it was, yeah. you know, I was like, what is this? Global warming? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Um, climate change on a picture. Uh, yeah. That was sure. hard to explain. Yeah. Um, and then they... Had an artist retouch the painting. Uh, I think Wyland came and retouched some of the whales. Yep. And But it wasn't quite to the extent the original project was. And then, unfortunately, after that, it got defaced. What, how did it get defaced? Well, people come in, draw a couple octopuses. What happened? I think they added a couple parts to the whale that weren't included in the original. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Um, Made some, uh, some more changes anatomy. to the anatomy yes, of the whale. Yes, yes. Um, more scientific view of it. Unfortunately, and then that building came to be replaced, and the, the mural was deemed screwed up here and there, and, you know, it wasn't really worth something we were going to save for this uh, anatomy project that it ended up being in the end. Would you put it? Would you put a new mural somewhere else? Commercial Alley or somewhere. And any of those brick buildings downtown, really. It's. Um, I still look at them all as like a canvas. Yeah. You know. Um, and I think all the ones that have been done around town have all added added value to town. And um, you know, nice things to look at. But Rich wanted me to update you. He sent me a text afterwards. We were talking about how someone defaced the old whale wall and uh, maybe drew some extra whale parts on there. <laughs> Rich sends me a text says, I forgot to claim that maybe Banksy, remember the famous artist Banksy in England? Maybe Banksy drew the anatomy on the whale. We might have destroyed a priceless piece of art done by two of the greatest artists ever. <laughs> it's not just the fins that are up. It's time for your news on the nines with News Guy. Sorry if I seem a bit frazzled. Last night I shared an Uber with Barbara Streisand and Roseanne. <laughs> The feds interviewed Rudy Giuliani to learn more about Trump's election interference. However, after talking to Rudy, they actually know less. In Minnesota, a man is accused of pelting strangers with skittles. But when they read the charges to the jury, they drew nothing but snickers. And that's your news on the nines. Now back to Reinman in the Morning. Megan, what's going on? There is a famous baseball player who... Did not know who Tom Brady was. In his words, he asked, "Who the bleep is Tom Brady?" <laughs> and how did I, this come up? Like, how would like 
How famous is the baseball player? Pretty, pretty famous. Oh wow! Or so, so they say. I am not well versed in the field of sports, so I couldn't tell you. You scored a basket that one. Time. I did, but believe it or not, like you know, even I know who Tom Brady is. Granted, I also grew up around here, and my father is an avid New England Patriots fan. Is this guy from the states? Well, I guess you have to go to the Shark app you, to find you out. You do got to go on the Shark app, but I want to ask. Still, who wouldn't know Tom Brady? I. <laughs> I got That's kind of to, amazing. I got nothing to say to that, but I do want to know, you know, as someone who is, I also am not really familiar with the Celtics, what are a couple of Celtics players, or who are a couple of Celtics players that, like, I should know about, lest I get the side eye from people in this office, such as yourself? Do you know who Jason Tatum is? No. Well, there's one. Okay. Do you know who Jalen Brown is? No. Okay, that's the other one. So those are the two. You Tatum need to and know. Brown. Okay, but I'm going to throw a couple at you that are like classic Celtics, because we're all about classic hits. I'm sorry in advance. Larry Bird. Heard of him, yes. Okay, (laughs) heard of him. Well, then I don't like where this is going. Kevin McHale. Heard of him. Okay, how have you heard about Kevin McHale? Probably in this office. I know nothing beyond that. (laughs) Hmm. I'm going to throw another one at you. Air Bud. Growing up, I knew it was the movie with the talking yeah. golden retriever. There you retriever. go. Then you're, three, then you're perfect. You're three for three. <laughs> Megan knows her sport, but find out which baseball player didn't know Tom Brady on the Shark app. Yeah. And now, here's sports in 10 seconds with the sportsman. The guys who use sock puppets get athletes' hand. That's your sports in 10 seconds with sportsman on Ryman in the Morning. Uh, before we get going with another Shark app article, a little bit of trivia about Air Bud that the dog actor who played Air Bud was also Comet on Full House. Aww. So how about that? A little bit of trivia. That's so cute. What else is happening on the Shark app? I didn't know this, but apparently if you smell cucumbers in your house, that might be a bad sign because it could mean that you have some... Too many cucumbers. Some snakes. Oh. Well, yeah. having a lot of cucumbers is bad enough. I kind of support the cucumbers snakes. Cucumbers are good, I'm, though. I'm pro-snakes at that point. You want a dangerous snake you, slithering let me tell you around something. the walls in your house? If you, have, if you have too many cucumbers, if you have enough cucumbers in your house... Stop while you're ahead, Reinman. ...that the snakes are showing up, you know what? John. Go for it. Like, I'm like, snakes take over. No. Yes. No. You are, you are doing the work I that agree. the officials will have to I do one day. I agree that people suck, go but we don't need house. dangerous snakes in the walls. <laughs> Well, I mean, we don't know the snakes are dangerous. They're just showing up, man. They're like, dude, you got cucumbers over here. But this is why you check it out on the Shark app, is that like I wouldn't even know what that would be. Like I wouldn't even know what cucumbers would smell like. You know. Well, that's a sign that you need to eat more vegetables. Yeah, I guess so. So if you well but again you gotta eat your vegetables, John. Again, if you're in your home and you smell yeah, that's the weird thing, is I don't know what they smell. So I'd have to go read the article and you get the description. You could also like go the to article. the store and just start like smelling cucumbers. No, nah, I can't. You might get the the side eye from a couple people. I can't do that anymore, actually. Anymore. Yeah. There's a story here. Do you know there's also an athlete, famous athlete, and this is also on the Shark app, who is deathly afraid of cucumbers. Like he is so scared he won't even Maybe be. Maybe it's because he had a traumatizing experience with a snake. He won't you know what? He did. So go Ooh, check it there, out. There's a connection here. There is. It's on the Shark Gap. It's time for your news on the nines with News Guy. Ryan Seacrest will take over as host of Wheel of Fortune. Jeez, can he even reach the wheel? <laughs> yes, Ryan Seacrest will be the new host of Wheel of Fortune. Even Vladimir Putin said, how many things does this guy have to take over? <laughs> Vanna White is demanding a huge raise to stay with the show, insisting she's irreplaceable. To which producers turned over the Letters L O L. And that's your news on the nines. Now back to Ryman in the morning. Reach that point where I wrote something for the Shark app, and Megan, you have questions. So there is a major New Hampshire connection to the finale of Mad Men, apparently. Yes. I've never watched Mad Men. I know it's popular. I just haven't. Yeah. But I would love to know more. Uh it well I can't well, I would say no spoilers, but I will say that if you've seen the Mad Men finale. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a very notable song that plays a key role in the final scene, and that's Don Draper's Mad big, World. No. Uh-huh. But that's uh, Don Draper's big, like, this is it. This is what happens to him at the end of the series. And uh, there's a group from New Hampshire, a folk duo, twin brothers, as a matter of fact, who had a lot to do with that song. And it was just like, I love that show. 
And um, my mom, from her days as a newspaper editor, was friends with the singers. Oh, no this way. Famous group. That's cool. And so, and I knew them well. And I was just like going bonkers where I was like, it was like winning a championship because I loved the finale. And then also I loved the reveal of like the storyline. And I loved the New Hampshire tie-in. So it's my favorite finale of all time. It's on the Shark app. Go check it out. It's been eight years. So, I mean, come on. It's We're in the Sixth Sense territory <laughs> where it's like, hey, what about you? Favorite TV finale? You got one? My favorite TV finale is the one that made me cry the most, which was Schitt's Creek. My Again, f- that's the name of the family. Yes. Shit- I, want, I want to clarify S-C-H. that. Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. My- There's that. I don't. I can't recall a particular movie ending. What about you? The Departed, another New England movie. Great swerve at the nice end. Nice job to keep it live and local. Live and local, <laughs> and, a, and a lot of bloodshed. Okay, I mean, time I did to not, stop. It was quite violent. And now here's sports in ten seconds with the sportsman. Dodgers have a player named Will Smith. Well, we already got one guy with that name who likes to take a swing. That's your sports in ten seconds with sportsman. On Ryman in the morning. We're talking first concerts. Patrick and Newmarket. Ryan Setzer Orchestra. Brian Setzer Orchestra. For real? Where'd you see him? Uh, like Worcester or something like that. I was like eight years old, nine years old. It was right when uh, Jump Drive and Whale came out. You know how like metal shows, they have mosh pits and stuff like that? Yeah. They had a certain area split out so that they could do the dancing. Oh, that's awesome. Worst concert. Dave Matthews Smith. And why was that the worst? His voice was off. He was only playing new stuff. Uh, he played one old song the entire night. And then he came out at the end and played Jump, Jive, and Whale. So it all worked out. Oh, yeah. If he had done that, I would have I would have lost my mind. Hey, this is Bree. What town are you from, Bree? Newmarket. Bree and Newmarket. First concert. So first concert was New Kids on the Block. Saw them, I think, in Worcester. How was it? Was it good? It was awesome. It was awesome. Yeah, loved it. They were, like, staying in the same hotel, and so we were all trying to figure out which hotel room they were staying in and being all sleuthy. Was this, like, when they were blowing up in, like, the late 80s, like that time when they were taking yeah. off? Now I got to ask you, worst concert. What was your worst concert? Worst concert. I know it was the one that I was most excited about. So it was a Billy Joel and Elton John, like dueling pianos concert. And it was in Foxborough. And it was awful. Billy Joel was trashed. He had no idea where he was. Elton John only played instrumental. So it was like nothing you could sing to or dance to. And like the two just weren't in sync. And it was just... We ended up leaving early. It was so bad. Well, Billy's coming back to Gillette this summer with Stevie Nicks. So, you know, hopefully everyone keeps it together this time. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah, absolutely. But if you own a house near Gillette, be ready, you know, just in case Billy wants to crash. It's time for your news on the nines with News Guy. Florida is now on the lookout for malaria. Said Trump, maybe she's with our son, Baron. <laughs> Yesterday, President Biden unveiled his economic plan known as Bidenomics, which beats the original name, Joe Money, Joe Problems. <laughs> National Geographic laid off its remaining staff writers. Even worse, the animals have had to join only fans. <laughs> And that's your news on the nines. Now back to Reinman in the Morning. Megan, what's going on? There's a main restaurant that's apparently been named one of the best restaurants in the entire United States, and it's in Portland. You kind of pause there for a second. That makes me think you're skeptical or surprised. Well, no, but it's got the gears in my brain turning about favorite restaurants that you have in New Hampshire. Because I know we've talked about specific kinds of restaurants before, like your favorite place to get. I don't know, a burger or something like that. But what are some of just your favorite restaurants statewide, regardless of, you know, cuisine, atmosphere, whatever? What are just some places places you like to hit besides Beach Plum? Because I know you're going to say that. There's this one place uh, I really love, and it's just it's a it's a feel good local story. It's these two brothers, and I love what they've done. Uh, McDonald's. Have you heard about it? No, I've never heard of McDonald's before. Yeah, that's a good place. Two New Hampshire brothers. But what's this place in Maine? Whereabouts? It's in Portland. Okay. It's in Portland. Go to the Shark app. You find out about it. And what list was this on? It was a list of the top 25 restaurants in the United States. Really? It's in the top 25. What position? Can you tell me what spot it was at? No, I'm sorry. I got to keep the suspense alive the only way I know how, which is by making your life difficult and not telling you things. The way you say it, too. (laughs) No. No. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I'm really not. That's a very new thing. All right. Well, there's a restaurant (laughs) in Portland. It's one of the top 25 in the U.S. Head to the Shark app. Figure it out.
And now, here's Sports in 10 Seconds with the Sportsman. One of the Yankees threw a perfect game. Chris Sale threw out his back watching. That's your Sports in 10 Seconds with Sportsman on Ryman in the Morning. Megan, what's going on? I can't believe that I had never heard of this prior to now, but there is literally a rocking horse graveyard in Massachusetts. A rocking horse graveyard. It's, it's been dubbed Pony Hedge. People literally, someone literally dropped off a rocking horse in the middle of a field, and then people, other people started just dropping off rocking horses. And at this point, it's become a thing where it's just a field of abandoned rocking horses. This is the weirdest thing ever. It and sounds, I wish the, I found out about it first, because this is totally my kind of thing. A rocking horse, why would you bury a rocking horse? They're not buried, they're just sitting there. Oh, someone just dropped off a pile yeah. of rocking horses. There's, yeah, and they're like that's amazing. They're, they, they're like arranged in a formation. I don't know if someone rearranges them or what, but they've been. I think they're on someone's property, and the owner just doesn't care. Lets people drop them off. Oh, really? Yeah, it's it's really it, it's it's creepy looking, and it's really random. And the thing about it that I find interesting is I feel like it's such a New Hampshire thing. Yeah, yeah, that should be us. Like that's something that you would expect. Yeah. In New Hampshire, Massachusetts, yeah, they're, they're known for many things. Kind of stealing our vibe yeah. a little bit. Yeah, but it, 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 it's it's fascinating. It's. I was trying to think like what this would be because if, if someone just came upon it, I was like, maybe it was a carousel that just went wild and it just left everyone there. Rocking Horse Graveyard. Yes. Unbelievable. Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of running out of things to say about it because it just it's a thing and it's weird. And you know, I'm here for it. I'm, I'm actually going to go see Rocking Horse Graveyard at Lollapalooza. They're there with the devil monkey of Danville. <laughs> I thought he was lurking in the rafters of TD Garden. He might be. Check it out on the shark <laughs> Different app. Different monkey. It's time for your news on the nines with News Guy. In New Jersey, a man was arrested for chopping down 32 of his neighbor's trees. And since it's New Jersey, the trees were tied to cinder blocks and thrown into the river. <laughs> A Royal Caribbean cruise passenger survived accidentally falling overboard. Her fall was broken by a Carnival cruise passenger who jumped overboard on purpose. (laughs) Astronomers have discovered the reason that the universe hums. It does not know the words. (laughs) And that's your news on the nines. Now back to Reinman in the Morning. We're at that point where I wrote something for the Shark app and Megan has questions. New Hampshire's own Adam Sandler recently congratulated a golfer, but this golfer's name, Happy Gilmore. Yeah. It's speechless. <laughs> I'm speechless. And I mean, I there, there are more details on the Shark app, yeah, but his first name is actually, name. yeah. Well, no, it is now. Legally? Yeah. He's really Happy Gilmore. Yeah. But the thing is, it's like he's really good at golf. So he really is Happy Gilmore. See, here's my take on it. I feel like you... I mean, to each their own, but go, I go wouldn't check him name out. Go, my go child a... No, they didn't. He, But go read about this guy on the Shark app. He's a, just a ridiculous golfer and could be like the next big thing. That's hilarious. His name's, that is funny. His name's Happy Gilmore. That's bonkers. But I mean, when you think about it, it's also pretty silly, you know, to go back. This is before my time. 1979, you know, imagine you're just kind of a casual sports fan like you are. And it's like, oh, who's going to save the Celtics? Larry Bird. I mean, that's a funny name. If we don't, if you don't hear the name Larry Bird on that's a regular fair. basis, it's like, oh, is he friends with Sam the Eagle on the Muppet Show? Yeah, here I comes love Larry the Muppets. Larry Bird. Uh, is he is he living with Fozzie Bear? But yeah, Happy Gilmore, if real golfer. If we're talking about the Muppets, though, you've sent me off on a little bit of a tangent. Have oh, you boy. ever seen those memes where it's like, take any movie? Uh-huh. And if you can make the entire cast Muppets <laughs> right. and one character yeah. a human being, mm-hmm. like what would the movie and what, it's so funny, but you have to stop and think about it. You don't have one? I would say. I've, I have thought of them in the past. I would just say the 1989 Batman movie with Michael Keaton. I would just, <laughs> I'd love to see him roughing up a bunch of Muppets. I'm Batman. <laughs> waka, waka, waka. <laughs> Classic hits for the Seacoast, 1021, 105.3 The Shark. We'll be right back with more rhyming in the morning. You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. And now, here's Sports in 10 Seconds with the Sportsman. When you think about it, a speedboat is like a summertime Zamboni. That's your Sports in 10 Seconds with Sportsman on Ryman in the Morning. I have a couple guests with me here in the Shark Tank. It's Jim Mize and Jeff 
Fonts from the Northeast Bluefin Showdown. Gentlemen, how's it going? We're doing good. great this morning. Thanks for having us. Hey, yes, thanks so much. Thanks so much for being here. So tell me about the Northeast Bluefin Showdown. So the Northeast Bluefin Showdown, uh, we're excited to have our second uh, annual uh, tournament coming up uh, starting on July 8th in Newburyport, Massachusetts. We have 53 boats registered so far. We're proud to be affiliated with uh, Shark 102.1. We're also proud to be affiliated with Dana Farber and the Jimmy Fund, who we're hoping to raise more money for this year than we did last. And you know who would love this? Ted Williams. There's one thing he loved more than baseball. It was probably fishing, right? Legendary so. fisherman, for sure. Big time fly fisherman in Florida, Canada for salmon, and uh, he's also a tuna fisherman in New England. How many years have you guys been doing this tournament? So this will be our second year doing the tournament, and uh, the first year went off really well. We had 77 boats and uh, you know quite a few really great sponsors. And we put this together, and we were able to give out $85,000 in prizes to our participants uh, competing to catch the largest giant bluefin tuna. And we raised about $26,000 for the Dana-Farber. Now, I want to ask you a couple fishing questions here. What's the weirdest thing you've caught that wasn't a fish? That's I did, a tough I did one. catch somebody's fishing rod one time that had been on the bottom of the ocean for a little <laughs> while. <laughs> we That's definitely catch some unintended things once in a while. Uh, you know, you don't want to catch a bird or a seal, but right. uh, from time to time, they just decide that your bait is looking good. You know, that's about the strangest thing that I've seen on the end of my line. Okay, got it. Yeah, I didn't want to be like, hey, we got one here. Oh, my gosh, it's Jimmy Hoffa. Unbelievable. <laughs> you win the tournament. We finally found him. <laughs> Last question here, and this goes back to uh, my favorite Sesame Street bit. You ever catch a fish with teeth? Lots get... of fish with teeth. Really? Does it yes. freak you out? Is it super weird? What happens when you catch that fish? Well, you definitely want to keep your fingers out of their mouth. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you don't know until you grab, like, does it ever? Well, we know. I mean, yeah. for the most part, with the type of fishing that we're doing, you know what's got teeth. We don't find any like <laughs> weird things that have teeth, but we get a lot of sharks from time to time, Dude, and, that's... and you do not want to put your hands in their mouth. <laughs> that, that's, your, that's your T-shirt for the tournament. We know what's got teeth. <laughs> uh, you know what's got teeth? The Northeast Bluefin Showdown. Where can people go if they want to support it or register and take part? People can go to our website, the Northeast Bluefin Showdown dot com. Okay. Uh, you'll see our schedule of events. You'll see photos of all the participants, boats, uh, information about Dana Farber and the Jimmy Fund. People can come down. We're encouraging the public to come down during the week on the fishing days, which will be Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. The scales will be open from 11 to 9. People can come down, see the fish being offloaded, weighed, and, and that's really exciting. Jim Mize, Jeff Fonts, thank you so much. It's Northeast Bluefin Showdown. It's time for your News on the Nines with News Guy. Well, thanks to the Supreme Court, it looks like I may finally get into the University of Phoenix online. <laughs> Some troubling climate news, as scientists say it will feel like Subaru summer during the Toyotathon. <laughs> Geraldo Rivera is out at Fox News. On the bright side, his mustache was just cast as the very hungry caterpillar. And that's your news on the nines. Now back to Reinman in the Morning. Megan, what's going on? It turns out that New Hampshire is one of the most patriotic states in the United States. Hmm. I can I... believe that. Really? Yeah, sure. Why not? We're one of the original, we're one of the original colonies, Megan. Of course we're patriotic. Of course, John Reinman, of course. Well, there's all sorts of meanings to patriotic. I mean, Hold on. Well, be... while, while, you, um, while you do, um, let me know the meanings of patriotic. I have some, some music I'm going to play while you talk, so continue. Okay. Patriotism to me means setting off fireworks round the clock while you eat your fried dough, which then in turn sets off your own fireworks. All the dogs start barking. They hate us the rest of the summer. And remember that each time they poop on your floor. I'm John Reinman. Don't forget to vote for me. That was incredible. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'm trying. I was trying so hard, like not to laugh out loud the entire time. I just, I had, to, I had that music geared up and well, ready to go. Well, Marka. just give me one or two things about this because patriotism has could have broad meanings for people. Yeah, so well, like, well, you, you got to go on the Shark app to find out. Okay, what's your definition? Hmm. You got to play the music. See, I'm not as funny on the spot as you. If you tell me to be funny, I can't just be funny. Okay. Hmm. I'm just going to leave it right there. I'll take the win. It's classic hits for the Seacoast. 1021, 1053 The Shark, Ryman in the Morning, where Ryman is officially funnier than Megan. Hear What's that, new Lewis? With that? Hear that, Lewis? <laughs> Check it out on the Shark app. Why are we one of the most patriotic states? <laughs> 
And now, here's Sports in 10 Seconds with the Sportsman. The favorite to win the hot dog eating contest, Joey Chestnut. The favorite to win the chestnut eating contest, Billy Hot Dog. That's your Sports in 10 Seconds with Sportsman on Ryman in the Morning. Okay, if you were listening yesterday, I teased this that author Dan Brown was going to be on the show today. But Mr. Brown had something come up last minute. He's unable to make it. But here at Ryman in the Morning, I don't want to let you down. When I promise an interview, it's going to happen. That's right. I have a Dan Brown understudy. You ready to do this? Patrick from Newmarket. I always got a couple of minutes for you. So what inspired you to write a children's book? Um, I had such a wonderful childhood that I wanted to share it with all the other kids. That's so great. Are, are there any children's characters that you find particularly frightening? Oscar the Grouch. And how come? Uh, I always found him to be one of those ones, you know, he's on a children's show and he's always shouting. Oh, I was going to say the Count. When I was younger, the Count freaked me out. Just because he, he was a vampire. I mean, there was nothing menacing about him, but he was just a vampire. It seems like he has OCD, so that could be a little alarming for children. What do you, uh, quote, Dan Brown, do to get over writer's block? I will try and get away. I will walk away. I won't look at anything. You'll I will just walk away from it. Close your eyes and walk with your eyes closed. Yes. That sounds very safe. You're known about writing about conspiracies. Are there any crazy conspiracies you can share with us right now? I cannot share anything right now, but you will be the first to know, Ryman. Mr. Brown, a.k.a. Mr. Patrick from Newmarket, I really appreciate your time. And you can read all about Dan Brown's Wild Symphony being performed live at the Portsmouth Music Hall next Saturday, July 8th on the Shark app. Wonderful event for kids and families. Now on Ryman in the Morning, it's What's Up on the Shark app. With Megan, the Shark's own app and website guru. Megan, what's going on? As a granite stater, what are some things that you think annoy people from New Hampshire? Hmm, Massachusetts. It's always the first one. Okay, fair. I, I, I always Massachusetts driving would be the first thing. But I got to tell you, I drive I'll, kind of like. I'll tell a, you, sister. Yeah. yeah, the New Hampshire driving, I would say, is on par. On par. This year. Yeah, I've had some interesting commentary on my driving. Um, I have tailgated our boss to work unintentionally multiple times. Unintentionally? What does that mean? I don't... I don't what, your car just got out of control? I don't try to tailgate. I just get in my own world, and then I realize I'm on someone's bumper, and multiple times that someone has happened to be my employer. Uh, I'm trying to think of... <laughs> so these are things that would annoy... This is on the Shark app. Things that would annoy New Hampshire people. I'm annoyed by the fireworks. I've said that a billion times. I'm, I'm from here. I'm supposed to I'm like it. I'm annoyed by when Hampton Beach is overrun by people from Mass, and Did I can't you? enjoy my time. Oh, okay, that's fair. So that's that's your angle on Hampton Beach. That's what it that's is. That's what you have against that's it. That's my beef. Okay. If you because... remove 75% of the people... Look, I don't got beef against people from Massachusetts. If you want to come to the beach, like, well, hold that's on a fine. That's but your they're angle, coming, though. But they're coming to the beach, and they're being rowdy Megan, and disrespectful. I'm trying, I'm trying to bail you out here. I'm a, I'm a debate moderator. I don't need any bailing. I, I'm dying on this hill. Well, most people at Hampton Beach wind up needing bailing. But what I'm trying to say is Agreed, you, always, yeah. you always take on Hampton Beach. But my argument is it's not... New Hampshire people that go and make Hampton Beach get out of control, right? It doesn't have to. I, I'm talking about things that annoy people from New Hampshire. It doesn't have the, these things don't necessarily have to be started or initiated. It's gotta be, there's got to be some weather. It's got to be some weather related stuff in there too, right? Probably early sunset. What else? What do we not have in New Hampshire that other people have? The, peace of mind. I, no, I think we do. No, we do have peace of mind. That's just like I'm just my morbid think if sense any, of humor. Any store or Sonics, right? Like we don't have. We store. don't have Sonic, and I yeah, wish we had annoying. Sonic. That yeah, yeah uh, that makes me sad. I went to my first Sonic last year do you yeah. like it i did mm -hmm. it was a great time i felt like a cultured human being there you go well this is on the shark app these are other things that annoy people from new hampshire it's time for your news on the nines with news guy airlines expect record flight cancellations on july 4th in fact my travel agent told me to just strap myself to a firework there's a new campaign to convince people sharks have been unfairly labeled as dangerous. Who's your PR team? Asked Alec Baldwin. <laughs> Tiffany's flagship store in New York City caught fire. Said guys there to buy an engagement ring. There is a god. <laughs> and that's your news on the nines. Now back to Reinman in the Morning. I wrote something for the Shark app and Megan has questions. So tell me about this Ghostbusters car. Well, so it's the Ecto-1 from Ghostbusters. 
I've seen Ghostbusters, but I don't remember the what the vehicle specifically looked like. But you're telling me now all I have to do is drive down to Massachusetts and I can potentially find out for myself? Yeah, there's a dude. He turned his car into the Ecto-1. Isn't that rad? I love that. Isn't there someone around here who puts a ton of Christmas decorations on their car? Oh my God! You know I saw that. that. Well, you first know of all, go to the shark, go to the shark app. Look at the the Ecto one in Massachusetts. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's his everyday car, and uh, there's some fun Ghostbusters New England related trivia on there. But yes, I saw in downtown Portsmouth. I wasn't crazy. I actually, I did see this. I saw this as well. So either we're both crazy, or the, we're the people I was with. I was like, oh my God, I got to go get a picture of this. And I went back, and he was gone. But there is a guy who drives around the area with a Christmas car. What a legend! Right? Do you know anything about this guy? No. But I'm not. But it's like tons of Christmas lights and everything. Maybe, maybe he'll be like the DeLorean guys. You'll just you'll find him and then you'll mm. interview him. Oh, dude, I, I, well, that's what I wanted to do. Track and, him down. Let's find this dude. But then I. But I. There was also people who were kind of annoyed. I have to be honest. I overheard some scuttlebutt from like you know people on the street. People on the street. What up, Freddie? And <laughs> and they were like, talk to that guy. How can you even see where he's going? So maybe I don't want to talk to him. All right. Well, uh, Christmas car guy, if you're there. Uh, reach out to us. Send me a message right now on and, the Shark app. And Ghostbusters car guy? <laughs> We're good. <laughs> and now, here's sports in 10 seconds with the Sportsman. If you're going to the fireworks show, bring your baseball glove so you can catch some fingers. That's your sports in 10 seconds with Sportsman on Ryman in the Morning. Guess what? We have a follow-up on the Christmas car guy. Who am I talking to? Uh, I'm from York, Maine. My name is Mike Brown. I'm from AAA of Northern New England, but I know uh, the guy that uh, does the, the lights. Uh, he does all holidays. Right now, he's decked out in Fourth of July stuff with a big rubber duck on the top of his hood. <laughs> so where can I see him? Where is he driving around right now? He drives around downtown, around Portsmouth. I think his name is Chris. Okay, Chris. Oh, how about that? Wicked nice guy. That seems a little suspicious. Wicked nice guy. It's a nice guy, but his name is Chris, and he drives a Christmas car. Sounds like a Hallmark movie, doesn't it? I think he's going to be Santa Claus. He puts Easter stuff on it. He puts Christmas, Halloween. Oh, he does them all. We shall be on the lookout for the car with a duck on it. And be on the lookout for the shark van and the Dover 400 parade. I'll be in it with my daughter, Sadie, waving our American flag, saying hi. And make sure you go to SeizeTheDeal.com. That's where you can get half-off gift cards to Sassy Biscuit Co. You're going to want those Sassy Biscuits with you at the parade. But right now, it's Friday. Let's go to the movies. I'm Charlie Butters, and it's time for your Friday flicks. Out this weekend is Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. I don't want to say Harrison Ford's gotten old, but the boulder he runs from is his own kidney stone. In the film, Ford was de-aged using advanced CGI, as opposed to the trick normal guys use to de-age themselves, buying a Harley. The film kicks off with Indiana Jones battling Nazis, and if anyone in your theater cheers for the bad guys, just tell Roseanne to shut up. I'm Charlie Butters, and remember to keep an eye on the screen and a hand in the popcorn. Mass.